So we've previously discussed uh, primary structure in the context of how uh, of the amino acid sequence for a polypeptide and how uh, we can use we can look at the amino acid sequence um, in order to predict different properties of a polypeptide such as the isoelectric point or the molecular weight of the polypeptide. What we're going to look at uh, in this video is how uh, specifically the covalent linkage between amino acids, that is, uh, well, the, um, that is the peptide bond, uh, is important for the three-dimensional structure of the protein. So here's our peptide bond, right? So there's the NH of the peptide bond and then the carbonyl of the peptide bond. So this is an amide linkage. Okay, that's what we would call that as a functional group, right? And then there are two amino acids that this is attached to. So there's um, the alpha carbon and the side chain of one amino acid and the alpha carbon and the side chain of a second amino acid. All right. So if we just look at the if we just look at the structure as it's drawn, it would suggest that the nitrogen and the carbon have a single bond between it, and therefore that would suggest that um, that this is free to rotate around this bond. But what's missing uh, from this picture here is that there are there's a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. Okay, and because these are adjacent to the carbonyl group, their resonance forms with this, right? Okay. And so what that means is that uh, the this nitrogen carbon bond here has some double bond character in it, okay, some sp2 character in it. So and then what that means is that in fact that this is not free to rotate, all right. So that constrains the relative orientation of, uh, for instance, the uh, side chains. Uh, the R1 and the R2 between each other into a trans configuration, okay? So they're opposite to each other more often than not. And so that also has constraints on uh, on the polypeptide backbone, on the backbone of the polypeptide chain, right? Uh, without even thinking about the side chains, because what that means then uh, is that instead of thinking of this as kind of as a long floppy string, there is a lot of rigidness to this. And so that can cause, uh, that causes a lot of constraints on the uh, overall three-dimensional structure. And so we're going to look at that about a little more how that could, that's possible by looking at this link. So we're going to take a look at um, a, a just a dipeptide. So at this link, so if we go to that, we find this screen, all right, where we have Two amino acids, we have, excuse me, we have one amino acid, so here's the N terminus of an alanine, here's the alpha carbon of alanine, here's the, um, here's the side chain for alanine, and then here's the C terminus, okay, and then this is linked um, to a, to what's modeled as a peptide bond, so here's our nitrogen, carbonyl carbon, carbonyl oxygen. Uh, and then we can see that with these small spheres, okay, that's indicating the resonance uh, that lies between the lone pair of the nitrogen and the carbonyl uh, functional group, okay? And then on the right-hand side of the alpha carbon, there is another uh, peptide bond, okay? And so we can think of this as um, a plane. So we're going to go back here real quick. Oops. Wrong one. We'll go back here real quick. And so we can define a plane because of this rigidness, uh, with, because of this double bond, we can define a plane uh, in which all of these atoms lie in the plane. So the carbonyl oxygen, the carbonyl carbon, the uh, amide nitrogen, and the amide hydrogen, right? So this is all, whoops. This all lies in the same plane. Like that. Okay. And so if we go back here, then we have a plane here around this peptide bond and a plane here around this peptide bond. And so we can shift this plane with respect to 
the uh, with respect to the uh, this carbon, all right, and we can define an angle. So, for instance, there's a single bond between uh, the the uh, between the alpha carbon and the nitrogen of the peptide bond on the left. Okay, if we rotate this. then if we rotate this because that's around a single bond okay we're changing what's called the phi angle okay so this rotation around this bond is phi all right if instead we're looking at the rotation of the second peptide bond all right that's the c angle okay and that's the one that's colored green right now and then the phi angle is the one that's colored green now. Okay. All right. So let's turn on show clashes. So again, because of the rigidness of these peptide bonds, uh, what we can see then is that at certain points, depending on the angle of phi versus C, there are going to be clashes. So this red orange region in the middle is a steric clash. So this is basically uh, means that th these particular uh, these particular phi and C angles are not compatible with each other. They're running into each other. All right. So that constrains then. Uh, to orientations where these steric clashes can't occur. So at phi negative 35 and C of 125, uh, everything's fine. But for instance, at phi of negative uh, 35 degrees and C of 165 degrees, there's a steric clash between the oxygens, of the carbonyl groups from both of the peptides, um, and therefore this is not allowed. Okay. And so there are a broad range of uh, different phi and C angles, and you can play around with this on your own, um, where you can look at what conformations are allowed and what are not. And so, of course, we can also have, uh, we can have, for instance, steric clashes between the carbonyl uh, oxygen of the peptide bond and the side chain, the alanine side chain, uh, or we can also have steric clashes between, uh, for instance, the NH bond, so the hydrogen of the NH, so if we swing this around, it's quite slow, come on, so these NHs can also be sources of steric clashes, uh, such as at phi 165 C25, all right? So because there are these constraints due to these uh, rotations, right, there are certain regions, certain uh, configurations which are allowed and some which are not. So this is defined by what's called a Ramachandran plot, which is shown here on the right. Laser pointer. Okay, so on the x-axis is the phi angle as we've uh, already defined, and the C on the y-axis is the C angle. And shaded regions are allowed regions. So these are regions where steric clashes don't occur. So as you can see, most of the graph is not shaded. So there's a lot of configurations that are not allowed, uh, a lot of rotational configurations that are not allowed in a polypeptide chain. And there are very few that are. Uh, what's more is um, that this allows for prediction uh, this also allows for some prediction of secondary structure, which we'll talk about in the next video, uh, such as, for instance, in this region, uh, if these, these particular configurations of phi and C are observed, it suggests that this is um, an alpha helix of some sort, versus these are either parallel beta sheets or uh, anti-parallel beta sheets. And we'll discuss exactly what those kinds of structure look more in the next few videos.